Hi, this is part two of Who Sees You. Last week, we looked at Hagar and the principle we took away or I pray that you took away is that when she realized that God saw everything that blew her mind and when it blew her mind, she came to know God for herself. And so oftentimes when we realize that God sees everything, meaning things we don't know, things that have happened, what people think towards us, what people have done towards us, what things are occurring everywhere. And when we know that God sees everything, we realize that he is involved in everything, even if we don't understand it. And so that revelation alone, when you really understand that God sees everything, then you realize there is a God. And when you realize there is a God, you realize that you have hope. This part two is focused on God sees you and me as an individual. There's a scripture in the New Testament that says even the hairs of our head, every one of them are counted. Well, obviously, I don't have any up there, but every one of them is counted. And that is particular to me. You are special. You are unique in a time and an age where oftentimes a lot of people have a problem with self-worth. I've told you and I continue to reiterate, God values you. God values me. Otherwise, we would not be created, whether we're tall whether we're short, whether we're skinny, whether we're a little bit larger than most, whatever it is, there is no one in this whole entire world or in the history of this world that is created just like you and me. So our text is coming out of Exodus chapter three, and it says in verse seven, and the Lord said, I, sh I have surely seen this particular scene is I have seen you as an individual. I have looked intently at you and I have personally witnessed every thought, every plan, every disappointment, every victory. And when we realize that God sees us as an individual, he's not too busy. He doesn't overlook us. And whether we are in the quiet confines of our bedroom, whether we're in the boardroom, whether we're in the church and we feel like we're all alone, God sees us. And some people might ask the question, why does it matter if God sees us? Because when we understand that God sees us uniquely and individually, there is a purpose that he is watching us for. And it goes on and it says, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. God was telling Moses, I'm sending you back to rescue my people. I have seen them. I have heard them and I know them or I feel them. God is saying today, I see you. I hear you. I know you intimately. And oftentimes, especially in the Old Testament, human characteristics, physical human characteristics are attributed to God to demonstrate not only his relationship with us intimately to where our minds can comprehend it, like where it says the arm of the Lord is stretched. That's not literally saying that there is a physical arm coming from heaven, but that is saying that God being a spirit who loves us and sees us, he reaches out. And so that we can imagine that picture and arm coming from heaven. And that's like, wow, how big is the arm? So when we picture the eyes of God, intently focused on us, not the left, not the right, but focused on us. How special, how spectacular, how supernatural is that? And he not only says that he sees him, it picks up in verse eight and he says, I am, I am come 
down. So it says he sees them, he hears them, he knows them, and then he says, and I come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land. And so why would God tell Moses, I'm coming down? God is everywhere all at once because he was relating to Moses. I am intimately going to do a work through you on behalf of each individual who I have heard cry who I know has been waiting on me to do something. They heard about me, meaning this is over 400 years of slavery that these people are involved in. You talk about a nation being oppressed. They have been beaten. Their babies have been killed. And God was there all the time. But he had told them way back in Genesis 15, 13, he told Abram, you're going to have a great people. But they're going to be slaves. But one day I'm going to bring them out. I continue to tell you the script says all things work together for the good of those who love God who are called according to his purpose. It's going to work out for your good because God sees you. How do you think the people felt the first 50 years? The first 100 years, then 200 years. In 300 years, people are dying. They're being oppressed. The government is not right in Egypt, but God is seeing them. Well, what does that mean? He sees me. Have you ever asked yourself the question, can God do it for me? In other words, you've seen in the Bible or you've seen physically that God does things on people's behalf. But when you think about, will he do it? For me, then you become bewildered. You become exasperated. You, you find it hard to believe, but he'll do it for her. He'll do it for them. He'll do it in that country. But what about our country? What about our lives? What about our circumstances? God revealed himself to Moses and told him that I see the people. And he told Moses to tell them, the children of Israel, when he would go back to be that deliverer, tell them that I see them. Why did he choose this moment in time? Because it was Cairo's time. It was a season of deliverance. When God was telling Moses to tell the people in Egypt that I have seen you, he wanted them to know that he saw them because he knew the next step was he was going to deliver them. I'm sharing with you today, if you don't take away anything other than the fact that God recognizes you, appreciates you, and is involved with you personally, even when you were hurt, even when you were disappointed, even when you find it hard to believe for yourself, that God is involved in your circumstances and in your life. God is saying today, I see you. And when you realize that God sees you, realize that he is not going to leave you in those circumstances. He's not going to leave you in those broken places. He's going to deliver you. So today, take a moment to meditate and think about the fact God sees me, but he just doesn't see me. And he is a distant observer, but he sees me and he's going to deliver me. This is your season to be delivered by God. I can't tell you why now. I can't tell you that it didn't hurt what you went through. I can't tell you that I have complete understanding of the things that I go through and why wouldn't he deliver me then because he saw me. I can just promise you that the encouragement today is that God sees you, which means he hears you, which means he's intimately involved with you. And through the words of my mouth, he has come down to deliver you 
from whatever it is. You've cried, you've prayed, you've waited, you've longed for today. God sees you and this is your season for deliverance. God bless you.